Where does our food come from is a great question, you know. If you ask the children, they say, I know where our food comes from, it comes from the shelf. Over the past 50, 60, 70 years, uh, our food production system has really been transformed from the small family farm of the past to large industrial food production system. Where most of our food comes from now is almost a factory-like environment where the focus has been on producing a lot of stuff with a lot of inputs like fossil fuels, antibiotics. It's important for us also to recognize that the food system has become contaminated with uh, toxic chemicals. Where does your chicken come from? It comes from a very, very large manufacturer of chicken. Where does your beef come from? It comes from a place where 10,000 cows are put next to each other. 80% of the antibiotics that we use as a country as a whole are actually used in producing food animals, livestock and poultry. And the vast majority of that are antibiotics added to animal feed for reasons other than treating disease. The consequence is that we get this terrible problem with increase in drug-resistant bacteria. Our huge use of antibiotics in agriculture, in livestock and poultry, is definitely linked by the science to increasing resistance that comes back to uh, affect humans. Our food production system actually is responsible for a significant amount of our greenhouse gas emissions. Those come in the form of CO2 emissions as well as methane coming from largely livestock production. Industrial agriculture is the largest polluter of our waterways in our country. The amount of petroleum that's used both to harvest that food and then to transport it a long distance, keep it refrigerated so it doesn't perish, can have a huge impact on carbon dioxide emissions. The water quality gets eroded. The farmers and farm workers get more Parkinson's disease and other diseases that are now being linked to pesticide use. How we produce food, transport it, distribute it, comes from more energy use than our cars, our trains, our planes, etc. So there are real opportunities here to think about how we might reduce our climate footprint by altering our food production system. So we're overeating meat, we're eating meat which isn't healthy, at the same time we're, we're really committing animal cruelty, we're causing antibiotic resistance and we're polluting our waterways. There's gotta be a better way. To make change, we need to think of the multiple levels that change needs to occur. At the, at the most individual level, of course, we can make choices when we go to the supermarket and buy different kinds of food. At some point, you have to say, well, if more poisons are not the answer, then what is? And you come to a whole other way of thinking about producing your food. You think about growing it without pesticides, without poisons. What we buy matters. And what we tell grocery stores or you know, cafeterias about what they carry in terms of how it was grown is important. By reducing our meat production and consumption, we can significantly reduce greenhouse gas emissions from our food production system, as well as altering the food supply in ways that are more health promoting. Much like they did for tobacco policy, I think clinicians, physicians, nurses, could become the lead advocates for community change, to bring healthier foods into communities, to change agricultural policies so that farmers could grow healthy food. Because without their leadership, who else?